In this video, I solve a practical problem related to mechanics of sea waves. First, I introduce the problem, then I describe methods used, and after that, I solve it by answering three questions. I do calculations in Excel, and the main reason for this is that by simply changing the input data, which I show in green cells, I can very quickly obtain new results. So let's start. It is proposed to install a wave energy converter at a site where the water depth is 35 meters and the seawater density is 1025 kilograms per meter cube. At the proposed site, a pressure transducer is located 5 meters below still water level. And in this figure, I show the measurements of pressure obtained from the transducer. And we can see that the wave period is 8 seconds and the maximum pressure recorded is 60 kN per meter square. And we need to determine the following. First, the length and height of the waves at this site. Answer the question when in the wave cycle the pressure at a point 5 meters below still water level is equal to 53.12 kN per meter square and calculate instantaneous pressure at a point 5 meters below still water level under the wave trough as shown in schematic plot A. Also when we have downward zero crossing between crest and trough and finally when we have upward zero crossing between trough and crest, as shown in diagrams B and C, respectively. Now let's consider methods, what we will be using to solve this problem. To solve this problem, we use equations that are based on linear wave theory. Linear wave theory applies to conditions of low wave steepness and high relative depth. Wave steepness is defined as wave height divided by gravity and divided by wave period in power 2. And relative depth is defined as water depth divided by gravity and divided by wave period in power 2. All the parameters are defined on this diagram. And wave period T is the time for successive crests to pass through a fixed point, for example, point A. Most problems of practical interest do not fall within the linear wave theory regime. However, linear wave theory can give results which are good enough when used outside its strict region of applicability. In addition, linear wave theory is the simplest theory and is the best starting point to develop good understanding of wave mechanics. In question number one, we need to calculate the wave length and wave height. We start with calculating wave length using deep wave equation. And then we need to confirm if we indeed have a deep wave. And this is done by calculating the ratio of the water depth divided by wave length. And depending on its value, we either adopt wave length or recalculate wave length using another equation. For example, equation for intermediate wave. To calculate the wave height, we use equation for pressure. And this equation is derived from unsteady Bernoulli equation for potential flow, where pressure is equal dynamic component plus hydrostatic component, and where eta is the free surface elevation, and it depends on the amplitude of the wave. And amplitude of the wave is half of the wave period. In the problem, we are given the maximum pressure, and we know that the maximum pressure recorded when we have the maximum water surface elevation, and this is wave crest. Therefore, we can determine amplitude of the wave and then the wave height. So let's start doing calculations in Excel. To speed up calculations, I have already prepared a spreadsheet where I show all the equations that I need to answer question number one. I also show here input data in green cells. I have not done any calculations yet, so let's do them together. We start with calculating deep water wavelengths, and this would be equal gravity multiplied by wave period in power 2 divided by 2 body. So we type equal 9.81 multiplied by 8 seconds in power 2 divided by 2 pi. So open bracket 2 multiplied by pi and close the bracket. 
The wavelength is 99.9. .9. Now we check if indeed we have deep water wave. We calculate the ratio of the water depth, 35, divided by the wavelength. And this ratio is 0.35. And we now compare this value with a threshold value. And for deep water wave, this threshold value is greater or equal than 0.5. We have 0.39, therefore it's intermediate wave. And we need to recalculate wavelengths using full equation. And lambda in this equation on both sides of this equation, on the left and on the right, we need to use iteration method to calculate lambda. And we can use Excel solver function to do this. To use solver function, we start with the trial lambda value, for example, 95.3. And now we need to do calculations of the equation where lambda is calculated as deep wave lambda multiplied by hyperbolic tangent 2 pi d divided by lambda. And on the right hand side, we will use trial lambda value. So equal. We already calculated deep water wavelengths multiplied by hyperbolic tangent, 2 multiplied by pi, and multiplied by water depth, which is 35, and divided by trial lambda, and close the bracket. And answer is 97.965, which is slightly different compared to the trial lambda. Now I can use solver function to finalize my wavelengths. To use solver function, it's in the data tab, solver, and now we have to set up our objective, and objective would be where we calculate our intermediate wave lambda, lambda by changing variable cell, and this is where our trial lambda would be, so B14, and now we need to put some constraints, and constraints would be that two of these values, trial value and final value, should be equal. So it's now B14 should be equal to B16. And we can solve. And now we have our final lambda value equal 97.729. So we answered first part of this question. And we need to answer second part, which is the wave height. To answer this part of the question, we will use the value of the maximum pressure provided. We know that when we have the maximum pressure recorded at a particular point below still water level, it means that we have the maximum water surface elevation above that point. And when we have maximum water surface elevation, it means that it's a water maximum distance from the still water level to the free surface, which is our wave amplitude, or we have wave crest above this point. Therefore, we can use this equation to calculate eta maximum, which would be equal to our amplitude, and amplitude would be equal half of the wave height. We know that when we have wave crest, the parameter in brackets, and the cosine sign is equal to zero. Therefore, cosine of zero is equal to one. Therefore, eta maximum is equal to the amplitude. Just rearranging this maximum pressure equation, we can calculate the amplitude. And this maximum pressure equation, or just pressure equation, we have two components, dynamic pressure and hydrostatic pressure. To calculate dynamic pressure, we need to know Kp coefficient. And Kp coefficient is just a transfer function for pressure. When z is equal to zero, basically the, at the still water level, Kp is equal to one. So the dynamic pressure would be maximum. At larger depths, closer to the seabed, Kp is close to zero. And therefore, contribution of dynamic pressure would be negligible. It's like the contrib contribution from the waves are negligible. Hydrostatic pressure will increase. Therefore, we can calculate Kp and then we calculate 
amplitude, wave amplitude. To know wave, Kp, we need to know wave number, and wave number would be equal to multiplied by pi and divided by wavelength, which is 97.729. And now we need to calculate Kp. And I show equation for Kp here, where we have hyperbolic cosine, and under hyperbolic cosine we have uh, wave number multiplied by z plus d, and here we just have wave uh, number multiplied by the water depth. So equal hyperbolic cosine, and in brackets we have wave number, which I just calculated, multiplied by open bracket again, z, which is a minus 5 meters, plus d, 35 meters, close the bracket, and divided by cosine, hyperbolic cosine again, and in brackets we have wave number multiplied by the water depth, which would be uh, 35 meters, and close the bracket. So Kp value is 0.732. Now we can calculate the maximum free surface elevation, which will be equal to our amplitude, and after that we can calculate the wave height. So this would be equal, we open the bracket, maximum pressure is 60 kilonewtons, so multiply by uh, 1000 to convert into newtons per meter square, divided by density and gravity. So open bracket, divided by density and multiply by gravity, close the bracket. And now we need to plus Z and now everything divided by Kp. And this is 1.32 meters. So the amplitude is 1.32 meters. Therefore, finally, we can calculate the wave height as being 2 multiplied by the amplitude and this would be the wave height for this side so we answered question number one we calculated the wavelength which is approximately 97.7 .7, and the wave height is 2.64 the next question which i will probably introduce as a separate video to make sure that this video is not too long would be to calculate when in the wave cycle the pressure at a point 0.5 meters below still water level is equal to 53.12. And after that, we have another question to calculate the instantaneous pressure at a point 0.5 meters below still water level under the wave trough, downward zero crossing between crest and trough, and upward zero crossing between trough and crest.